Uh, good morning, everybody. And like I promised, I was going to show you some more books. And just in case if my voice sounds a little bit low, it's because uh, everybody is sleeping right now, and I think this is the best time to do a tutorial when everybody's asleep. So, so I got two books to show you guys. Um, let me see if I can show you this vertically, because I'm gonna. I can't do show you like two pages at the same time. So I got to show you vertically. So, unfortunately. It doesn't work that way so we're going to start with this book first <clears throat> and then we're going to do some tutorials and we'll try to do some you know i'm going to try to explain pretty much some of the techniques here are very similar to the other christopher hart book um beyond comics which i've shown you guy you guys i think um i think it was like maybe three months back i showed it but i don't mind um showing you that book again because I want to review my books again but this time what I want to do is I want to show you how pretty much everything is done um, how I would probably do it also and uh, so anyway let's get started this one is by Christopher Hart and this is uh, Drawing Crime Neuer I don't know how to pronounce that right Neuer for comics and graphic novels and like I said, um, some of the artists here are very similar to the Beyond Comics, How to Draw Beyond Comics, which I showed you that book three months back. And um, let me um, look at the... Um, okay, uh, these are the artists right here that contributed to the book. Thurl Banks, uh, Clint Helinski, Kin Koo... Fabiano Neves, Lou Mena, Carlo Shulayan, and Kevin Sharp. So many of these guys actually did um, some stuff for Beyond Comics. And here we have the contents. <clears throat> and what I like about this book is it's sort of like... Um, <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. It's sort of like uh, how um, uh, Frank Miller would draw, you know, kind of like that dark comic book style and stuff. And it's very dark. Um, I wouldn't say gothic, but it's more like melodrama dark. Um, and it's all about crime and um, pretty much about, uh, you know, scenery and stuff. So it's going to show you a little bit of everything. So here we have uh, the heads right here. And uh, most artists actually use like a block shape to form the face and stuff. But this is pretty easy. I mean, all you have to do is just do a simple oval. And then you add in the features, which is the eyes, the planes. And then you shape it to sort of like the, a block shape. So that's what the planes are for, people, to form the face. And this kind of like, uh, if you look at it and if you analyze it, it's sort of like uh, David Finch would draw his faces, see? Or something like Robert Marzulu. So it's similar to Robert Marzulu and it's similar to David Finch, the way he draws his faces and stuff. And like always, you know, the eye is shaped as a circle and then you do the shape of the eye and, and the shape of the planes of the eye, see? And I've shown you this technique before that if you want to do a perfect alignment of the eye, do sort of like a diamond shape. So if anything, this is sort of like the eye socket of the eye, shaped like a plane okay so that's what gives your you know your character your faces your eyes uh you know a three-dimensional look the planes which i explained that many times already <clears throat> but i don't mind explaining it again anyway so here we have a profile and this is a little bit different of course um 
you could actually use the Loomis method which I actually did here and you can tell I I did drew on my um, book because it's a very old book I'm thinking of getting this book again I might get it and this time I will not draw on top of the book or any of the pages because it's a pretty old book so it might rip up sooner or later so but it lasted a pretty long time I had this book I would say like maybe 10 to 15 years so it's a really old book it's kind of wearing out a little bit here we have more eyes over here more techniques and pretty much here's the uh, V shape in the form of an eye so when you do a V shape for an eye you have to shape it like an eye you don't want to make it look like a V shape and that, of course, that's the first process when you do a V shape for the eye. But you have to shape it as an eye like you see over here. See, this is more like a realistic eye. And I like the way he did the cast shadow, like right near where the bridge of the nose is right here. So you can see the planes over here, you see. And look at the difference from this, from this one right here. And this is really cool the way he did this whole face here and uh, analyze the way he did the planes of the hair, you know, the rhythm of the hair. And then he darks, did a lot of dark areas and stuff, especially here on the side of the face and stuff. And then, of course, the jacket is dark right here. And part of the jacket here is lighter because of the light reflection is coming this side and this side is more darker. And here we have um, <clears throat> noses right here. And of course, I don't really draw like this. I usually use the regular pyramid shape or the triangle shape. But this is another way of doing the nose. So I would guess that when you do a nose like this, you have to do like probably a spiral kind of and do the contour, the center of the nose. And then just make sure that this looks more like a three-quarter view nose. This doesn't look too much as a front view. Over here looks more like a front view. Notice that this segment over here looks more front view if you look at it. And if you look at the um, the length of the nose, it's the proper proportion. But over here, it's a little bit off. But I guess he's just giving you an idea how this is done right here. And here we have, looking the underside of the nose. This is the center line of the nose right here. And this is the profile nose, the planes of the nostrils, you see. Even in the nose, you're going to see, you know, planes. And this is done a lot in comic books, making planes for the nose. This is a very well done drawing of a face, especially when you're looking up. So if you look at the um, study, the segments of the alignment of the eye is sort of like this. And the nose is a little bit closer because you're looking up at the face. OK, so here we have expressions, expressive mouths. And you can tell, you know, the teeth is not exaggerated like most of the time. And notice that you see the gums right here and you see the bottom of the teeth and the opening of the teeth. But you don't see too much details in the center. So that's what they mean by not exaggerating with the teeth. And I think it tells you pretty much over here how to draw the teeth, the mouth and everything. This is this. Let me uh, put this like this so you guys can see a little bit better. And let me uh, add a little bit more light. Let me see something. I think um, I've been... Hold on a second. It's the... Um... Okay, that's what I did wrong. Hey, wait a minute. Okay, that's good. All right, so you can see a little bit more brighter. I just, just got to lower the light a little bit like that. All right. Okay, now sometimes when you 
you know, when you mess around with the phone by mistake, you end up putting it lower light on the phone. So I got to really, really pay attention to that. Okay, so here we have a profile lip right here. Notice a three, it's sort of like three dimensional. And you can see the opening of the mouth. And this is the finished process over here. This is a very well done um, profile lip. And you can see more cast shadow down here. So this is this right here. And this is this right here. And this is this right here. Except that this has, you know, the second drawing has cast shadow. So that's what's good about this book. And later, after we finish looking at the book, we'll rate the book. And let's see if it's a 7, an 8, or 9, or a 10. But most likely, the book might be a 10. All right, so here we have a face. How it's sort of like um, David Finch would probably do his faces, and uh, Robert Marzullo would do something like this. And this is the finished drawing right here. Notice um, on the lips, you can see the planes on the lips right here, especially the bottom part of the lip has planes, you see? That's what gives your mouth character. You could actually, you know, draw the lips, but then just make sure you do the planes of the lips. I, mean, I did this over here, you know, I'm trying to practice this, so. So when you see light pencil like this, that's me that I drew on the book. Here we have, um, I wrote down Daryl Banks because I started looking um, pretty much on the first pages. It'll tell you the pages. For example, Kevin Sharp did 68, 71, 76, 80, and Daryl Banks did from 8 to 33. And Clint Lewinsky did from 110 to 113. So at least it tells you um, every page who did what, you know, which artist did this. So all this mainly by Banks, uh, you know, Daryl Banks. And look at the way um, this eye is formed. Um, and of course, it's a little bit exaggerated with the eyelashes. But most comic book artists actually do eyes like this. And you can see it's a form of a V-shape. Now, let me give you a, an, um, a quick demonstration <clears throat> how we do the eye, especially in that type of um, form. So I just got a so sharpen the pencil a little bit. <clears throat> So let me give you a, a demonstration how he does this eye. For example, when you do a profile eye, and you could do a circle if you want, just to, because th this will give it a, a better understanding and also, you know, a three-dimensional look. So usually most artists would use a V shape. Now, in order to get this effect, of course, you know, you give it form. You need to start giving the eye form. Just put it in black pencil here. You give the eye form, and it looks more like an eye. And then after that, you know, you add the eyelid. First, you want to do the um, eyelashes. So, and notice that the eyelashes are going out. It's a little bit exaggerated, but of course, he does the eyelashes afterwards. So it goes out. Always remember that the eyelashes go out. But you always got to remember that the bottom part is tiny eyelashes and the top is a little bit thicker. And of course, the top right here is thick. So now we do the pupil. So the pupil, you know, we do just a little bit of a curve for that pupil because usually if you look, you know, inside the eye, say this is the uh, eyeball, 
the pupil kind of pops out a little bit. So you always got to keep that in mind, all right? So always remember that the, uh, the, uh, the iris of the eye pops out. Not the pupil, I was wrong. I keep confusing the, uh, the iris as a pupil by mistake sometimes. But. So, and then you're gonna start working with, um, of course, the eyelid right there. And after you do that eyelid, you do the shape in front of the eyelid and see what else. This part goes up a little bit. And then of course, after that, you do the, um, the eyebrows. And I've shown you many times how to do eyes, um, but different sort. But I never shown you that. I think I'm not really sure that when you do when you do the iris of the eye, you have to like pop it out a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So let's um, let's do um, this eye right here. And so we're gonna start doing the shape of the eye. We could use the eyeball shape and then we'll start working. We can do the grid to indicate where the iris is and then we could start doing the shape of the eye and then the bottom of the eye is very important guys always remember that the bottom of the eye it's very important and then the eyelid and then the plane that goes on top of the eyelid so now what I got to do is the outline of the eyelashes like that and I'm doing the same thing that you see over here and then I'll do the bottom part. But I gotta remember that the bottom part is shorter. It's smaller, it's not, you know, it's not exaggerated like this over here. So this is another good way of drawing an eye. So, so let's do this in black pencil. First I'm gonna do the shape of the eye, of course. Like that. That. and then over here and then the eyelashes see how nice it's coming out and then the iris and always remember because of the eyelashes and because of the eyebrow that's more forward on the face it leaves you, you have no option because you have to draw not only the pupil, you know, dark. You got to do some highlights, of course. But there is darker on top of the iris. So you always got to keep that, you know, in mind. Always remember that on top of the iris is dark. And then you can, you know, shade in the eye a little bit. And it so that's more of a like a sort of like a, a, a dark dramatic eye like you see over here and I gotta admit he draws very beautiful dark you know uh, mysterious women and you could tell the way he does the expression on the eyes and the way she closes her eyes and let me give you an idea that um, you know doing eyes uh, especially if you want them closed so let's do this in pencil first. We'll do an eye that's close and let's say I'm looking this way like that. So you want to you know make sure that the the eye is going down just a bit like that. Make sure that the uh, um, the eyelid is done also, and then you're gonna bring up the lower eyelid. A little bit you know up to the top to give it that eff effect like she's sort of like has sort of like an, an, uh, an erotic look let's just say and then if you want you can darken uh, the top right here where the eyelid is 
make it more thicker and then make the, the eyelashes a little bit down just a little bit down to give it that erotic look you know what I mean like she's she you know, especially when they're you know, sometimes women they have that certain look like they're in love or something or or they're excited you know or because if you look at her um she's sort of like um evil but has sort of like an, a, an erotic look on her face so you want to capture that right here the profile if you look at her um you can tell that she's you know relaxed looking up in the sky but she looks cool with the shades the hair you know the wave and all that it's really cool i love the way he did this leather um clothes on her it's and i'm telling you this guy is really good when it comes to um character design and character design is uh very important when you're doing character design so that's what this is people character design so we got this eye done so now we got to do is you know give it a nice uh, dark edge to it you just finish some details and then we'll just do the outline of the eye right the eyelashes first we want to darken the uh the outline a little bit more thicker and then we'll do you know the eyes closing a little bit the eyelashes going down with some going up a little bit and then this part right here a little higher with tiny little eyelashes coming out and this eye you know you know you give it sort of like an erotic look like she's in love or she feels a little bit high in love or something, you know. You know, you just got to be creative when you're doing eyes also, guys. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. All right, so let's turn the next page. Um, here we have noses. And, of course, um, if you look at this, and let's study this, uh, you can tell it's sort of like a triangle but with a curve, Okay. So the way he did this nose, and of course, this is mostly done for female noses. Um, and I mentioned before that when you're doing female noses, you can start off with the same length as a male nose, but you're, you're making it smaller at the same time. But you can actually do, you know, start from the bottom like this, like a triangle shape. In the bottom and then go up so let me give you an idea how you do this so oops the light went up too high I'll just dim it a little bit all right just a little bit more okay wait a minute it's just this light I think it maybe if I turn it this way yeah it's better because if I put it like this it's showing too much so maybe if I turn it a little bit like this it won't show too much all right, so <clears throat> let's do the nose now. Um, the nose, um, and we'll do it in pencil in case we end up making a mistake. This will be the bottom of the nose right here, guys, okay? So we're going to do it in a form of a triangle shape. And when we do the triangle shape, we're going to give it a curve. Pretend that you're doing sort of like the Eiffel Tower. I think maybe that's the best way to describe this. Uh, this is the bottom of the nose right here and uh, the planes of the nose right here and remember if you look at this part of the nose right here it's got form so we want to capture that so and then you you know you bring it up like this and then that's it you got the form of the nose And then you do, if you want, make a circle in order to get that grid effect. Actually, it's sort of like a, a, pyra a pyramid shape right around here. But use a circle, you know, in order to get that, <clears throat> that effect. And then we'll do um, the nostrils. 
we'll start working with the nostrils. We'll work with the nostrils there, and, and that's it. So in a way, you're using a triangle, but you're actually giving it a curve, you know, like that. But be careful, make sure it's, you know, nice and level when you do this technique, because it's not going to be easy to do this. So, so you got to keep that in mind, you know, to try to do that correctly done. So then we'll do the planes of the nose. And then, of course, we already did the nostrils and the bottom of the nose. And then we could just, you know, do more dark, you know, cast shadow underneath the nose. And then you have your nose. And remember that shape that goes underneath the nose. It's sort of like an 11, but an 11 going like this underneath the nose. So that's what this is, okay? Uh, let's see. Let's fix this up a little bit here. Make this. So I want to make sure I capture every single detail, how he's showing us right here. Okay, so right here he has um, a different outlook of the nose. Like the nose is tipping, and sometimes it's hard to draw noses, you know, especially pointing up. So this is sort of like a block shape, but a curve a block sheet in order to get this effect over here and remember you gotta you know shade in the entire side plane is shaded it tells you right there see on this side of the nose so now we're gonna go with the lips um, okay now the lips here are doesn't really tell you no it doesn't tell you too much how to do the lips but I've shown you many many ways how to draw the lips you can use you know scribbling you can use uh, shapes you know all that stuff to do the lips and notice um the, the m technique sort of like the m you know you're drawing the m but you're stretching the m and mostly a lot of lips are done that way it's sort of like if you're looking at the letter m and you're stretching the m so that's what this is Especially when you're doing the um, center of the lip. So let's see if we can draw this lip. But of course, this lip is a little bit exaggerated. And uh, it's always good to try something new. So, all right. So let's do, you know, the grid lines for the mouth and the lips. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just wait till that plane pass because... I don't like to talk loud. All right, let's just give it a few minutes because the planes here, they come too close to the house. My Lord, okay. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're going to see the M shape, but stretched. So let me give you, and you could do this in both ways, the M shape or the bird shape. It's like if you were seeing a bird coming at you that's how you do a lip, especially the front of the lip, okay? And then, now we're going to do, because this lip right here, if you look at it, this lip here is sort of like very pucked up, very full. So I'm not going to do it exactly like this, because I don't really consider that a real lip. So I'm just going to do a regular normal I would say a normal Andrew Loomis lip and uh, and just give it a little bit more of a shape on the top here and then the bottom part of the lip. Always start with the bottom part but give it a nice curve there and if you want you can you know do ovals just like Romero does he uses ovals to form the bottom of the lip. And um, let's do a little bit the, because sometimes, you know, the lines of the, you know, the contour of the lip comes out a little bit, just a little bit. And then you have the outline of the lip coming up like that. Okay. Always, when you do the lips, always start from the corner like this. Start from the corner. 
but when you're working with the bottom you have to make sure that you do the shapes correctly and then you could do the outline from the corner all the way down to form that lip right there okay so let me um, put a line there as you know, because I don't want to confuse you because I'm actually going to post this on on YouTube and when the block is over on Facebook I will post it all right so we just got to capture you know the top of the lip just make this a little darker here and usually like in between where the lips is um, in the center it's a little bit there's a lot of cast shadow and you want to actually capture that so I'm doing almost the same thing it's just my lip is a little bit different so and then you know cast shadow here underneath right here cast shadow underneath here and then we add more details right there and more details right there see so it looks better than this um, maybe because um, he drew it you know because some women pucker their lips you know so that's what he tried to do but I'm not very good drawing puckered lips um, all right so here we have um, uh, the teeth right here but I made a mistake here I started drawing so that's going to confuse you guys. So let's erase that. All right. Let me just erase this really good because that was a bad move I did drawing on this. Okay, so now let me explain this to you guys. This is my own. Oh, that's the ruler right here. Notice this is a mouth, but it's opening some you could actually start from the outline where the gums are right here then do the center of the teeth right here and the right here is going to be the gums now look at this very very carefully and then when you do the teeth start off with the gums of the teeth or if you want do the outline of the teeth but be very careful because remember you have to realize that the teeth are divided so you really want to capture the bottom of the teeth you know the opening part of the teeth because they're opening you know what i mean and of course um after you do that you're going to do the edges a little bit darker right here usually you know open mouths are done like that now let's look at this mouth right here you see how the bottom you see a little some detail in the bottom of the teeth but you don't see nothing in the center, just some hint of the gums. You see, that's how you do teeth. You don't want to exaggerate the teeth, all right? Just remember, exaggerating the teeth, it's not going to help your, your character stand out. All right, so here we have sunglasses, how to draw, you know, shades. And this is also done by Daryl Banks. And uh, you can tell there are all types of sunglasses and shades and stuff. So this is an awesome drawing he did. And I got to admit, he really captures the, the dark mystery and the drama of his characters. Look at the way he did all this dark area, the highlights right here, and a lot of dark areas over here. And especially with the hair. And the inking is phenomenal. So yeah, this is a very good artist, Daryl Banks. The only thing with Daryl Banks' technique in drawing the figure, which, you know, um, it's okay, but it's not, you know, something that most people would use. Here we have the traditional characters versus crime noir. And of course, you know, um, sometimes criminals are dressly nice, you know. So he's giving you an idea from this to this and from this to this, okay? Here we have the traditional well-dressed guy, you know? So he's giving you an idea to this and an idea to this. And then he's giving you an idea from this and an idea to this. Notice that this is very drama. And notice that from here to here is very drama because a, a lot of dark... You know a lot of dark areas and 
it gives you the you know the uh, the feeling of of mystery so so he did that pretty well all right so let's go on with the next page so this is the actual technique that he does now I kind of like drew on this to figure out how this is done so most comic book artists actually use shapes for example they actually start with the core of the body just like um, Robert Marzullo would do something like this the core of the body and then you might probably do the lines coming out for the legs and then you give it more shape and then you give it you know you start adding clothes and look how cool that looks from these process right here you can tell that this is awesome right here and here we have a dude holding a rifle that's also done by Daryl Banks all of this is done by Daryl Banks okay this is also done by Daryl Banks And then he gives us an, an idea how to draw clothes with wrinkles. And that's very important, drawing wrinkles on clothes. So you really got to uh, keep that in mind, especially when they're doing action scenes like this. You know, you can see the wrinkles on the clothes, how it moves, the direction and all that. Pretty cool stuff. And here we have uh, pants. The way the pants, the folding of the pants, the wrinkles of the pants. This is really cool. The skirt folds. Notice that he draws the skirt really tight on the woman, but notice he does wrinkles. You see, there's wrinkles over here, wrinkles over here. And these are, you know, it says it right here zigzag folds that's what it is it's like you're doing zigzag folds on the wrinkles on the skirt you know so or it could be anything on the pants and this is right here also um the hips thigh area everything everything has wrinkles including where the crotch area is there's a lot of wrinkles also and folds here with a tight jeans bunch around the legs, creating short chopping horizontal lines. And here we have bathed in shadow. I don't know what they mean by that. But let's just keep turning the page. Oh, okay, I see. You know, when you're doing the uh, perspective and the large angles and then the shadow of the figure, especially when it's far away, of course, the shadow is going to get more bigger. See, so they're giving you an idea how the figure stands and you can see the shadow of the, f of the figure. And this is more really dramatic when you see the shadow really long. And you can see that a lot in movies. And uh, especially over here, it shows right here. And right here, you can see the guy in action. And here's the light right here. And then you see the shadow really t turning longer because there's a lot of bright light. You can see the hallway right here, which is, I think it's uh, an alley. I'm not really sure. But that part right here is really dark. And here's more shadow right here. Um, here's the figure right here, and then you see the shadow of the of the figure, which is really cool. And say the light source is coming from behind him. <clears throat> so you see a shadow right in front of the figure right here, see? And we got more shadow stuff here. Correct versus graphic shadows. The correct shadows, graphic shadows correct shadows right here graphic shadows so you can see the difference this is kind of like the same thing here and this is also the same thing right here 
again, I drew on my, um, which, uh, let me see if I can erase all this stuff here. I'm going to go back to this book again and erase all these pencils that I did. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe I should just order the book again. I could probably find this used, who knows, in a bookstore or a, or a thrift shop. Let's see. I'm going to try to find it again because this book is already getting damaged already as it is. So let's study again shadows, the correct shadows. You see a lot of shadows here. And then, of course, this is a group of people looking at a fight. And then at the same time, the shadow of the people they're looking at is the people they're fighting. And you can see it's a, like a big shadow here. And this is more like more graphic shadows right here. See? So in a way, uh, they're looking like, say, they're in an alley and they're seeing two guys fight. And you can see the shadow of the two people fighting in the background. Here we have more shadow, cast shadow right here. Say this could be more like I would say Superman walking, right? In the like sort of like in the street, and you see the shadow of Superman walking. So that's very important to use shadow in your comic books. And I think um uh David Finch is he's got um tutorials uh how to do shadows. And you can look it up on his channel. And here is a, a demonstration right here with the light post right here. And it shows the shadow right here near the wall, how it changes. Because when they're near the wall, of course, the shadow is going to change a little bit. Part of the feet is over here and then part of the body is on the wall. So always keep that in mind. And you can actually, when you do stuff like this, um, you could you know train your eye to see the light source and that would actually help you out figure out how to do the shadow now say the light the shadow is underneath where the floor is so of course the shadow of this guy is going to be bigger because it's sort of like you know um actually pointing from the bottom part sort of like a uh, a worm's eye view so that's pretty interesting the way this book explains you know the shadow and that's what i like about this book because it's not only explains pretty much about the cast shadow on the faces and on the body but also when you're drawing stuff like this um here we have light from below as you see this here is a, a perfect example right here you see the light you know and of course, this is not, you know, this is just a, an example, you know, like the light coming from the ground. And you can see it right here on the character. And you see the shadow of the guy here. And you see a lot of shadow behind the, this guy. And that's what gives your drawing drama when you're doing a lot of shadow and stuff. Uh, here we have a guy walking in the street. And you can see the street. And you can see, and like I said, the light reflection, um, say there's a light post and half of the feet is in the ground and half of the shadow is on the wall. And since this wall is shaped differently, look how he did the shadow from here to here to here and to here. See? So always keep that in mind. And here we have another light post. Um, of course, this is this right here. So they're giving you an idea how the shadow, the reflection of the light gives the shadow to the guy. And this is the original drawing right here. So this is just an example. So whenever, if you ever, if you guys ever get this book, keep in mind this is, this is just an example, okay? And this is the real drawing right here. Okay, here we have more shadow, but this is more like inside of a room. And you can tell there's a lot of drama because there's a lot of dark areas and shadow and all that stuff. So the light is coming from outside the window, you see? See the difference? And of course, since the light is coming from outside the window, and usually when you look at something like this, he probably woke up 
from his bed and he's looking out outside the window and it's probably br a nice bright day outside so the room is probably still dark or maybe there's not enough light in the room and it's creating a lot of dark areas from this side right here and this over here and of course the shadow of the windows you see you see the shadow of the windows and the shadow of the guy over here so this um i'm telling you this guy explains the shadows really good um okay so let's look at this one right here so we have a i think this is called a pillar notice the shadow of the of this bad guy right here i don't know if it's a bad guy it could be a good guy i don't know but anyway if you look at the the example over here here's the light post the light post is actually shining on him and then you see the shadow of the guy so that's what this is over here okay all right so let's turn the page Okay, let's study this one right here. This is uh, shadows on texture surfaces. When you're doing the, the light from the top of the person and you see all the shadows on the body, so that's what this is over here. You can see there's a lot of drama and shadow here. And of course, the light post is on top. So this is a, an example of this over here. This is the example of this over here again this is all about shadow also this is the example to this and this is the example to this the water sewage tunnel and we all know that the sewages are really dark so you can't really see anything inside of a sewage so of course you're gonna see a lot of shadow especially where the where the tunnel is and then you see the shadow in the reflection in the water. You see more lighter over here. And it tells you right here the example. The shadow inside, including in the water, you're going to see the shadow. All right, so let's turn the page. Okay, here we have partial silhouettes. And right here is the example right here to this. You can see the light post is up here. The light reflection is up here. But at the same time, inside the core of his body is more darker. So that's what you're seeing right over here. And here we have more shadow right here. Blazing light from behind the Arnesist. <clears throat> okay, let's keep turning the page. Here we have the fade into blackness. For example, this is like for example, you know, when there's like a lot of dark areas, and you can tell that he did a lot of dark. Of course, he did this in pencil, and then he does it in black ink later on. Okay, now we're talking faces here, shading faces, variety of approaches. Okay, so here we, here's the light source, and it tells you right here. And this is the, this part of the face is darker. And I need a lot of practice doing a lot of shadow on faces. So that's what we're gonna do this week also, when I, whenever I get a chance. I'm gonna show you guys pretty much how I would do it, doing shadow on the faces, okay? Here we have the light source coming here, and here we have the light source coming on this side of the face. And this side of the face is a little darker right here, see? So this face is a little dark right here on this side. So it's giving you different directions how the light source is showing. And then also the, the small cast shadow right here, a vertical highlight over here. Okay, so that's very important, including in faces. Uh, here we have shading faces, the enforcer. So if we look at this, the light source is coming from both sides, but in between where the eyes are, are dark, and the nose area is dark, in between where the mouth is, is dark. So you're gonna see more light on the side of his face, but when you look at his uh, front, the front view, in the center, you're gonna see a lot of dark areas, especially with uh, the planes in the corner of the nose. Uh, this one, the light source is coming from one side, 
and then this side of the face is more darker but notice that you don't want to make try to remember that you know i've seen a lot of artists do this they they just do half of the face dark that's not the way you do this people you got to do this part of the face dark but then you have a give you have to give a hint of a little bit dark and pretty much i've shown you let me give you a quick demonstration let me see if i can just do a regular face here um so let's do a regular face and i'm going to give you a demonstration how would you do this all right so let's um, let's do it in pencil first let's do the shape of the, f the head And let's do yeah. you know just a hint of the of the eyes you know do you know something simple so that way I can explain how this is done <clears throat> this will be the forehead here and and of course we do the shape of the face okay and the hairline would be here okay so first i want to do certain details so that way i can explain this better and you guys can understand what i'm going to show you right now how you do shadow on a face and cast shadow okay let's chop off this side of the face all up because i want to make it you know well proportioned of course and then of course the neck is pretty big because he's a big dude all right we'll do also some part of the collar of his shirt because not only we're going to do the shadow on his face but we're going to do shadow underneath his jaw and all that stuff okay all right so now we did a face so if you look at look at this face real good this Everything is shaded, including the ear and this part down where the, the collar of the shirt is. And of course, the tie is black. So notice that the shadow actually starts traveling all the way here and all the way here and here around the eyes and around where the lips is and underneath where the, the center of the lip. But you got to make sure that this part right here is lighter. But you don't want to do, like I'm going to show you right now, I'm going to show you, say some people do shadows, cast shadows like this on the face. Okay, so let's, let's just do pretty much a little bit what we're seeing. Let me see. Uh, like this. Okay, that's not how you do the cast shadow on a face. Because what you got to do is you got to visualize that there are highlights on some of the cast shadow. Right? Maybe I should have done this in pencil with the black pencil I can't erase. So let's do it in, you know, the other side in pencil. So you're going to do cast shadow here and cast shadow around the eyes and cast shadow around underneath the eyes and right here where the eye socket is then underneath the nose there's a cast shadow and then right here where the bottom of the nose is there's cast shadow and on the lips there's also cast shadow and of course the cast shadow um the bottom of the lip kind of goes out a little bit and the form of the chin there's also cast shadow you see <clears throat> and then underneath the uh, the chin, there's definitely a lot of cast shadow there. But let's um, let's um, bring the shirt a little bit higher because I think I did that wrong. Let's see. I think I and the shirt I did it too low. But it doesn't matter. You could actually fix that. So underneath the jaw here, you're going to see uh, a lot of cast shadow here. See. So you always got to you you know keep that in mind that. That even if you do half of the face all cast shadow, there's going to be some part of the other side of the face that you're going to see cast shadow, especially here with the um, the crease of the nose, which is sort of like the planes. 
of the nose that has cast shadow. And remember, just like in the black and white movies, when you see a black and white film, you're going to see a lot of dark areas, a lot of, especially in, you know, there's movies like mystery movies or, or like Sherlock Holmes movies or, or the Arthur Hitchcock movies, you know, mysterious movies. Try to um, look at movies that are sort of like old black and white movies that are, you know, mystery movies. And notice you're going to see a lot of dark, you know, black and white uh, parts in the movie, especially on the faces. And that's done a lot. And that's what um, I've been... T there was a, uh, an editor from Heavy Metal Magazine that told me that once, that when you draw black and white inking on your on your drawings, you got to make it look like a, a black and white movie. That's what it's all about. You know? And see, the, the hair is dark over here. And of course, this part over here is a little bit lighter because of the light reflection, of course. And let's just give it some shape on the, on the head. So you'll get the idea that the cast shadow is something very important when you're doing drama, and especially on your comics. And C will finish his ears. And remember, even though even though the ear is on this side where this is more bright inside the ear, it has to be dark. So you want to give that ear a lot of dark, you know, shadow right there. So let's fix the eye a little bit. And of course, the eye is a little smaller and there's a lot of cast shadow underneath. And I think I exaggerated this part a little bit. I just all I have to do is just erase that part right there. But you'll get the idea, you know. And this is what they mean about doing cast shadow. And then this right here is the cheek line. And then you could be creative, you know. Maybe do a scar on his face or something. And then let's fix the top of the head. Fix the top of the head. The corner of the head here, which is the hair. This part is dark right here. So I want to make sure that this is dark. And then, of course, this is just a little bit lighter right there. And then let's concentrate on the shirt. So this side of the shirt, you're just going to see, you know, zigzag creases on the shirt. You know? And then this part of the shirt, since this part right here on the, the head is darker... And I think I made a kind of do, did a boo boo on this part, so I could just fix that. Uh, let's fix this over here. So the neck comes out here, the collar of the shirt. So this part right here is all dark. See, you know, we just gotta keep in mind that cast shadow is very, very important. And then the tie is over here, so we gotta fix that a little bit. <clears throat> and the tie is black. So this could be, uh, you know, uh, a villain guy, a mafia guy or something. That's could be a criminal guy because he's got that evil, bad look on his face. So you have an idea that cast shadow is very, very important. Okay. All right, so let's continue with the book. Okay, so I'm not going to do any more drawings unless if I see something interesting that I got to show you how, you how it's done, I will. So here we have more cast shadow. But this one is more, you see a lot of light reflection on this uh, character over here. But you see this part of the eye is darker and underneath the nose is darker. And pretty much like the other drawing that I've shown you, and, the, and underneath the chin, is there's a lot of cast shadow. Cast shadow where the neck is and where the muscle is right here. So there's a lot of cast shadow. You, you see a lot of light area. There's more light on this side of the face, and this part of the face is more dark. And it shows you right here, light source and light source over here, see? Okay. 
Okay, let's turn the other. Okay, so here's a woman. Very nicely drawn. And I gotta admit, the guy drew her really sexy. And you could tell that there's a lot of shadow underneath where the, the arm is. Shadow where the buttocks is, the pants. And this is really cool the way he did the creases on the pants. Awesome. Sinful women. Okay, now they're going to talk about sinful women. So let's look at this. And here we have cast shadow, blocking out the shadows, trying to figure out. For example, this woman killed her husband, I think. I'm not really sure. Or she slept with the guy and she shot him. And then, it, you know, to get this drama look like you see down here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me go right there. To get this whole scenery right here, of course, you got to add a lot of dark areas, you know. And you can see a lot of dark shadow, cast shadow on the guy. And a lot of dark areas. And I like the way he did the drapes here. He did a lot of details here. Fantastic stuff here. And then he did a lot of dark, you know, areas over here on the woman's clothes, on her arm. Because, of course, this whole area where she's at, where the guy's lying dead on the, on the bed, you can see a little bit of the blood coming out of his mouth. Okay, so he's got to make this really dark, like a black and white movie, just like I explained before. And here we have more um, silhouette heels. Got to draw a silhouette. This is a really cool way, and it shows you right here how to draw high heels on a woman. <clears throat> and you can see a lot of cast shadow underneath the skirt of this woman. And I gotta admit, the shape of this woman is fantastically made. And here we have a woman and her crew which I don't know what they mean by that, but I think this is drawn by Neves, I'm not really sure. And you see a lot of cast shadow on the clothes. There's a lot of cast shadow. You can see it here, here, underneath where the breast area is, a lot of cast shadow. And where the creases of the pants, like on this side, there's a lot of cast shadow. So this is very, very important, especially when you're drawing pants you're going to see a lot of cast shadow on the pants. And that's something that I definitely need a lot of practice with, doing cast shadow on clothes. Because it's not easy to do cast shadow on clothes. So I'm fantastically drawn. This is made by Neves. I love the way he draws his women. So dramatic and very sexy at the same time. All right, so let's go with this one. The nightclub singer. Okay, so if you analyze this, these are two bad mafia guys, you know, looking at this woman sing, I guess. So they're just sitting there, and you can tell there's a lot of drama because there's a lot of dark areas. You don't really see too much of their face, but you see the sunglasses, their face is like very evil looking. So there's a lot of light, you know, you see a lot of cast shadow on the arms, on the jacket, the creases, and on the table. Of course, the arm is on top of the table, so he has to do a lot of cast shadow there. And, of course, they're behind where the uh, stadium is, and this part right here has to be dark. So, yeah, this guy knows what he's doing when it comes to cast shadow. So here we have more cast shadow here. But this is done in pencil. And it gives you an idea how to do the woman in a grid form. Especially using spirals. <clears throat> so it's fantastically done. Want to be for a ride. I don't know what they mean by that. Want to go for a ride. That's my drawing, but I gotta erase that. Let me see what else we have here. 
the standing pose with attitude and pretty much like explaining you guys you see that you have the balance line there's a balance line here and there's a balance line right here right on top of where the breast is this is another way how to draw the figure by uh, doing regular circles you know stick lines and then you do the shape the outline and someone that actually works like this is actually Mike Hoffman does stuff like this so you know I've done stuff like this with you guys so I don't think I have to show you this but I don't mind doing it again anyway so let's um let's put this one on top here and let's con concentrate on this woman's figure right here so let's use a pencil for this right here so We'll start with a regular gesture, with the circles, of course. And always remember that the woman's uh, hip is big, so you got to make that circle big. Let's just make it correctly big, and the torso is smaller. And let's uh, do some erasing because we definitely need to erase this part right here. And then we do the legs. the joints feet so I'm not going to do it exactly the same like you see over here because I'm going to try to show you more of a front view so that way you understand how this whole process is done so this is sort of like a front view because he did a backside so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna shape the body like this. Like that. Always work with the center first, you know. Do the hourglass shape. You know, work if you want, you could start from the neck down. Like that. <clears throat> like that. Like that. And then you can see that he does the outline of the leg on this side and he does a hint of the outline over here meaning he doesn't attach the lines into the buttocks or to where the uh the hip area is so you could do something like this like that it's sort of like a hint you could do it also here <clears throat> And that's the way he does his women figures. Once you have that, all you gotta do is do the waistline and do the crotch area. And that's it. And then work with the breast. Always remember that the breast is around here on top of this line here. And then you connect the outline you start connecting it it's like if you were doing something like this let me give you a perfect example something like this you're doing you're doing something like this you're working with the core and then you're doing a hint like that see like that and then after you just connect everything all together that's what we're doing over here and that's what he did here okay so let's turn the page uh, this is a profile pose you can tell from the gesture the forms and that's it tells you right here basic line of action blocking out the pose and adding you know costumes and features and this is the finished drawing that he did for the whole process awesome stuff right here I love the way he did the car, so, so cool. Let me give you an idea, which I think I have it here. Let me see, if, uh, I'm not sure if it's here. Um, I think it's in the other book. Yeah, it's right here. Let me give you an idea. That 
you could actually make cars like this but you got to give it form when you're drawing cars I want to show you right now how he does and I think it's a uh, a different artist I think it's rich Faber does this you do the block form and then after that you do the shape of the car right and then you do the hint of the socket of the cars <coughs> just like if you were doing the sockets of a body or something or the you know the hip area of a person well you do the sockets of the car but if I were you I would start off when you do the box shape do the shape of the inside center of the car first then do the sockets and then do the shape of the car so you can tell he worked very different over here and he worked very different doing over here i also have another book on drawing cars um, but it's by uh, walter foster but we'll do that little by little so that's mainly how you do a car by using block shapes and here we have more cash shadow over here it's pretty cool he's lighting a cigarette to this woman right here she's smoking there's a lot of drama in this drawing over here hmm, let me see the loneliness of costume hero okay my favorite part faces and, and if you look at this I actually drew on the book, but pay no attention to the, uh, just pay attention to this over here. You know, don't pay attention to this stuff over here. Just pay attention to the center over here. So if you look at this and you analyze this, it's sort of like the Loomis method. And this is done by Kevin Sharp. I actually wrote his name here. Um, it's pretty much like the Loomis method, but more uh, comic book style. Here we have the Loomis method again. And here we have the Loomis method again. And this is a great way how to do teeth right here. Tells you the wrong way and the right way. That you're, when you're drawing the teeth, notice it goes in, see? Pretty much like i explaining to you guys. But remember, you don't wanna add too much details. This is the way the teeth are supposed to look. The center of the teeth, you have to leave it blank. And you do a hint of the bottom of the teeth and a hint of the gum of the teeth. And this is sort of like the Loomis method right here. This is this right here. And this is this. And this is this. And this is done by Kevin Sharp. Kevin Sharp, uh, he uses a lot the uh the loomis method but he has a different way of working with the loomis method because when loomis when he draws the head he slices the circle a bit but then again he maybe he slices a little bit i guess maybe he does but you can tell over here is more rounder over here So my greatest guess, let me see if I can do this one. Let me show you this one. Let's try this one out. And we'll actually try to analyze the way he did it. Let me see if you can see this. I think you could. So we'll do a regular circle. And this will be the center of the face, of course. And uh, the eye alignment, if you notice, it's a little bit different, you see? The Loomis would start right here in the center of the circle. So the eyes will be a little bit higher. But let's try it this way to see if this works out. And this is the uh, Kevin Sharp technique. So um, let's visualize the eye over here. And the nose line would be below the circle so this is going to be a different type of Loomis style or something this would be underneath where the mouth is and this would be where the chin area is so I think this is the way he does this so let's concentrate with this um, so we're going to do um, let me 
see, let me see, let me see. Let's concentrate with this. I think what he does is he does the planes of the eyes and all the way to where the, the cheekbones. Sort of like um, the George Bridgman method. I think that's what he does. And he brings this um, plane up. <coughs> And then he cuts over here, and then he does, you know, the planes for the cheek line all the way down like that. And I think that's the way he does it. But I could be wrong, but it's always good to analyze it, you know. So this would be the nose right here. And let me see. And right here would be the jaw. So I think that's the way he does it. Uh, so I think the eye would be right here. And then the other eye, since this is a three quarter view, this eye is gonna be closer to the center line. So, you know, we wanna make sure that on this side you see less and this side you're gonna see more because this face is a three quarter view and it's sort of like foreshortening, which that's very important to keep, keep in mind for shortening on the face. And right here is the jaw, all the way down to where the chin area is. Then right here, he starts visualizing an oval for the ear. That's what he does. So I'm sort of like analyzing the way he does. So it's coming out pretty good. So let's do this um, in pencil. So that way you can see it more clearly. So the Loomis method would, you know, when would be the face, especially the center would be around here, then the eyes would be here, then the nose would be above the circle, then the chin would be here. But this guy, he did it different. After he did the grid lines, you know, he did it like this, and then he did another line here, then he did another line here. That would be the bottom of the lip, of course. And then he visualizes, you know, uh, maybe he started the planes coming out this way. I think that's what he did. And then, or else he might have started the planes from the eyebrows all the way to the cheek line here. So I think it's better to start, you know, the planes uh, on the side of the face better. So, and yeah, it's coming out exactly the same, I think. And uh, right here would be the nose. So I think this actually works out. Um, I'm going to try this for now on doing um, three quarter views. Uh, and you could, you could tell the roundness of the head. And so let's look at my draw. Let's compare my drawing to this. So it looks a little bit the same. And of course, this here is this right here. So it, he did it right here. You can tell he did the same technique over here uh, using the Loomis method, except that the eyes are lower. And right here, you can see the eyes are low right here. Uh, let's, let's turn the other page. Over here, he did the Loomis method, but you can tell that uh, since this is a big face that he did, so let me show you how he did this. Let's, let's analyze this first. Actually, let's analyze this one. This one is a little bit more easier to understand. But this time, he did what Loomis does, because Loomis, let me use the ruler. Loomis uh, does the eyes in the center. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, wait, 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 wait. The eyebrow line, he starts here. Yeah, he did it exactly like Loomis and the nose right above where the circle is and then the mouth uh, where this, underneath the circle. That's the way Loomis does the, the head. And you can tell the roundness of the circle here and the shape of the head. So let's try this one out and see how that works out. So let's erase uh, this part right here. And let's erase this over here. We don't need this anymore, so. Because this page is gonna be more like for faces and stuff, so that, 
Okay, so let's do pretty much what he did here. And of course, he starts off with a regular circle. And the center, center line. And then this would be the eye line right here. Of course, this would be the middle part, but the eye line would be here. And then the nose line would be here. And then the mouth line would be here. And this is a big, you know, you could tell this guy's got a big jaw. So let's make his jaw big. So <clears throat> it's going to be sort of like how Loomis would draw his faces. But this is more like a comic book face. So it's going to be a little bit exaggerated. So keep in mind, this is going to be a little bit different, guys. Okay, so now we'll do the shape of the face. And then we'll do the jaw. So it's gonna, the jaw kind of like tapers in a little bit. Right there. So just like Romero and Loomis, we'll start with the nose. So I'm sort of like analyzing pretty much how he did this. So, so it doesn't hurt to analyze it and to try it out, so. It's a little bit different from the Loomis method, but you know, it's always good to try something different. Look how this head came out, it came out pretty good, except that Loomis doesn't work this way. This is more like Kevin Sharp. Kevin Sharp has a different way of forming the head. So, so now I'm going to work with the eyes right here. Eyes would be here. And then this eye would be here. So I want to make sure it's the same level as this part of the eye. I don't want to make a boo-boo or else my eyes won't come out right. So, so the eyelid would be here. Then we'll do the eyelid will be here. And then we can do the uh, eyebrow here. Then the other eyebrow here. So now we'll do the planes. Sort of like the cheek lines all the way down to where the jaw is. So I, I don't know if it's going to look like uh, the Kevin Sharp drawing, but you know, it's always good to, to analyze this and try it out. Let's see. And uh, don't mind if I keep repeating myself so many times. It's just, uh, I think too much. That's the problem with me that I think too much, especially when I draw. Uh, because I like to analyze, I, I actually analyze everything, including music, especially when I used to play the guitar, I used to analyze how I could, you know, play a tune or something. So that's the same thing with my drawings. So I like to analyze. I'm sort of like a scientist when it comes to art. And so, so far it's coming out pretty much like, um, you know, the Kevin Sharp uh, illustration, you know, so... So yeah, I think too much like a scientist when I draw, so. so. Okay, so yeah, I came out, if you look at my drawing and you look at this, it's kind of a little bit the same. So I'm gonna do it in black pencil so you can see more of the details. Right here is the eye and right here is the nose. And I'm not going to mess this up. I'm just going to do some certain details and that's about it. And then, of course, I did the shape of the face. Like that. Always remember when you're drawing faces and if you're doing stuff like this and you, and you notice that the face is big and the, the person has a big face, a wide face, well, you're going to know that you're going to have to make the size a little bit bigger on the circle. <clears throat> and um, Loomis explains that a lot, that sometimes when you're using the Loomis method, the faces are definitely going to change. It's not gonna be exactly the same. So always keep that in mind, guys. Okay, so it's looking a little bit like Kevin Sharp's artwork, a little, not too much, but um, let me see if I could just, um, Try to figure out 
to do the because he, I don't know I think he exaggerated too much the um the eyelids a little bit but it's coming out pretty cool it's not coming out that bad you know I thought it was gonna suck when I started but you know so far you know it came out pretty good The only problem with the black pencil that you can't erase that's the problem with this you know so yeah it came out pretty good i'm not gonna do too much details on this because it's sort of like um the process so i'm gonna leave it alone maybe do a, you know some type of um character design but i just want to leave it like like i'm seeing it right here the technique because I might be able to use this in the future, especially this one right here. This came out excellent. And then of course the mouth, we gotta do the mouth right here. Yeah, it came out pretty good. I mean, I like I said, I thought it was gonna be a boo-boo, but it's not, it's, it came out good. Maybe I'll just dark a little bit underneath the jaw, you know, because I, I, I don't wanna make it look too light. And then maybe dark a little bit, you know, on the side of the head a little bit. So just to give it a nice three-dimensional look. That's what it's all about, people. If you're drawing life, that's what it's all about. Art is all about. You have to give your drawing life. Let's dark the eyes a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to leave it like that for now because I don't want to ruin the drawing. We all know that this is going to be the shape of the face. And let's just fix this a little bit and this part of the face fix it a little bit. I think what I did wrong was that I should have made this a little bit closer. Yeah, that's what I did wrong right here. But anyway, it's, um, it's just a, a regular example that I'm doing right now. And this one, I'm going to leave alone. This one came out pretty good. I just make it a little bit darker. So I might consider doing a, sort of like a, a template, like a, a method page for this whole process that I did. Because I don't want to forget this one because this one came out pretty good. So I might do that. All right, so we'll just leave it alone for now. Okay, so let's keep looking at this. Um, this one, you can see that the face is actually, you're looking up at the face. And it's the same, sort of like the Loomis method, kind of. This is awesome, the way he did this. And look at the way he did the muscles. He used, of course, this, the gesture lines. And he did excellent on this. That's awesome right there. Okay, this is a sort of like a three-quarter view grid form face, and this is the actual drawing he did. And notice that he used the socket method for the eyes, and then uh, a three-dimensional <clears throat> uh, geometric shape for the nose, and then he did the lips. You could tell he did the planes for the face right here. So that came out pretty good. Let's see... Uh we got more stuff over here. Okay. And you could tell <clears throat> on this group drawing he did, you could tell he started off with, like I, just like I thought, he started off with the eyes all the way down like that, see? He did it right here, you can tell. And then to do this, uh, I would say this is more like a profile. So I think he did something like this. Let's see if we can capture that. We do the circle first. And then we'll do the lines. Uh, I guess the eye line would be more lower. So that's what he did. The eye line is lower. And this is the line for the nose and the line for here, the, right here for the chin. Right around here would be where the ear is going to be placed at. And then we'll do the front of the face. So I'm not going to do the ear line yet. First, I want to work with the um, the features first. So I think this is what he did. He did 
the eyebrow, the planes, the planes for the cheek line. And I think that's what he did. And then once he has that, he, he visualizes the um, either the ear or the jaw line. So I think the jaw line, here's the mouth right here. Let's, we want to make sure we have the mouth line. That way we'll be able to tell where that jaw is going to fall. So the jaw will fall where the same level where the mouth is. Okay, so, so far that looks okay. So we bring out the, you know, the jaw a little bit outward. So let's see what else he did here. Hold on a second. Okay, so this looks okay. So I think that's the way he did the profile. And right here with the jaw. And right there is the head. And right here is the ear. All the way down. Back of the head. And then he did sort of like a cylinder for the neck. But even if you do use a cylinder for the neck, you always remember you got to, you know, you got to give it shape like that. See? And then the eye would be around this level right here. That would be the eye. And then the nose would be around here. The mouth. And then the chin. Sorry, the lips. And then the chin. Lips and the chin. So I think that's the way he did. It's a little bit confusing because the problem is that he does the eyes more lower and then the nose more lower. I think um, I have to practice this type of technique that he does. It's not going to be easy to do this. So, All right, so let's go on with the next page. Uh, here we have a figure form that he did right here. And let's keep turning the page. You can tell he does a lot of drama. As you could sense a drama here, this guy leaving in a door. You can tell there's a lot of things happening here. You know, there's a perspective, I think. And uh, this looks a little bit flat, though. The door looks a little bit flat, I think. And this is the actual technique. And uh, pretty much like explaining that when you draw the woman form, this is another way of doing. You can use the. Uh, sort of like the David Finch technique and do the the femur bone that comes out this way so let's try this one out let's use another page <clears throat> okay so this is the way I think he would do the woman body it's sort of like David Finch and you're going to notice that a lot of techniques look a little bit similar to to certain artists and stuff. So this will be the socket for the shoulders right here. And now we'll do the um, underwear that that's what it is. It's sort of like an underwear. This will be the waist right here. We'll do an underwear shape. And then we'll do the socket that goes right on top. You can see that's right on the top here. So we're going to do the same thing and see how that works. And of course, the femur bone. So the femur bone, it looked like he did the femur bone kind of like, like this. If I'm not mistaken, he brings out the line a little bit out because, of course, it's going to, the hip is it's going to come out more. So... I think that's why he did that. And of course, this, and if it's a three quarter view, so common sense. I think that's why he did this line coming out a little bit further out because it's a three quarter view. And then he does the waist in, and then he brings it out because, you know, of course, women have big hips. And then we'll do the outline on this side. And then the outline, we continue doing, you know, if we want, like you can see here, he does spirals for the leg. 
So he uses spirals for the leg. He does the outline straight down to where the kneecap. And remember, when you're doing this, you know, any type of gesture, you could, you know, visualize the joint first and then just connect the line. That's all you got to do. Okay, so this arm is going up like that. And this is the line for her breast. So, like I said, you have so many options. Say you, you're drawing the woman, right? Here's the torso. You could do the center line here if you want and then do the breast in the center. Or you could actually do the line a little bit further down near the rib cage and then do the breast on top of the line. So you have different options to do the breast on a woman. So let's make it a little bit bigger here. Let's let's do some juggies. Okay, so this is the rib cage and this will be the bottom of the breast right here. So it's, this is going to be a little bit different. This is going to be the collarbone, which I think is called the collarbone. So the you can use a triangle or the teardrop method, whatever you guys want to use. And then you shape the breast. That's it. You shape it sort of like a teardrop shape. You know, make it nice and curvy underneath. And that's the woman's breast. Now, if you want, you can draw the breast in the center. So let's do the rib cage again. Say we'll draw in the rib cage of a woman. And remember that the rib cage is smaller. So you don't want to make that boo boo by making the rib cage big. So, though, this time we'll do the breast in the center. So the breast, do the triangle, and then the bottom of the triangle here, and then do the breast like that, see? Just like that. And then you have a perfect alignment of a beautiful set of breasts of a woman, see? That's all you gotta do, guys. But remember, you know, you have different options to work with. So let's finish the breast over here. So I'm going to bring out this side. So it's sort of, sort of like a three-quarter view. So this part of the breast is coming out this way. And this part is right a little bit down. Just a little bit. And that's how you do the breast. Let's make her hips. We've got to make her really sexy. So Okay, so we got the bottom of her leg done here. And top of the leg over here. And then we got a perfect body right there. It's This one is a little bit skinnier. But since I'm so used to drawing women with big hips. So my hips, you know, they come out a little bit bigger and stuff. So that's how you do it, guys. Let me show you a cool trick from... Uh, there was a video that Romero did yesterday. And this... Uh, let's pick... Let's see if we can find... Uh, a woman's body or something that let me see something here well this checks because I know there's a lot of women bodies here okay let's let's do this one right here and what Romero does this is really cool the way he did this and I'm gonna do it in pencil because in case this is the first time I'm trying out this technique but it's sort of similar like I would say um, what's his name um Mike Hoffman and um, so what he does is he starts the top of the shoulder like this and he does the bottom part right here which is the sort of like the balance line and then he brings it in he does the contour of the body all the way down like this just like that and we're going to try to do this figure right here Okay, so that's the way Romero would do. We'll do the head. Like this right here. And let's erase this because this is kind of like throwing me off. But I did that in black pencil. I won't be able to erase that. So it's too late. It's too late. So now 
notice okay this arm is going in because it's a three-quarter view so this arm is going to go in the other side of the forearm is on this side so <clears throat> what Romero does is that after he does this whole segment he does the outline of the legs and the outline of the legs over here but he doesn't do I mean if you want you could actually do a center line like this you know pretty much like how a Frank Springer would do but let's try the way Romero uh, does his figure then he actually visualizes and you have to train your eye to see where the crotch area is see that would be the crotch area and right here would be <clears throat> the leg and this leg over here then very simple you're going to see the waistline of the belt right here and the breast would be let me see first let's fix this part of her the top of her body over here because it's not going to look right so i want to finish this part right here and do you know a hint of her arm right here and now i could do her breast so her breast would come out like over here so that's a very cool technique that Romero actually did and I'm gonna actually do uh, more stuff like this from R Romero that I think it's pretty promising it's not that bad that's the way he did it <clears throat> that And you can make a grid line here because you want to make it look, you know, three-dimensional. So that's what the grid line is for. And the, the waistline is actually going to help you make it look more like a three, a three-quarter view and a three-dimensional. So, so you're making your drawing a little bit more three-dimensional. Okay, so always keep that in mind. Let's fix the rib cage on this side. Let's fix this side over here on the top of her shoulder right here and right here, her arm right there. And then her neck and her face. We'll do her breast. And part of her jacket. She sort of like has like a leather jacket on top or something. Okay, so that's the way Romero does his figure. And that was something new that he did yesterday. And let's do it again, just in case. Uh, let's do it on the back side. We'll do a, a, just a regular flat pose. That way you get an idea how Romero does it. with you know the shape of her body so the V shape so I gotta go back and look at his video again because it really you know it's a little bit different this technique but I have an idea what he did. Um, I also took pictures, the process that he did step by step to figure it out. That's what I usually do sometimes, take pictures. And then what I do, I analyze it afterwards. So that's the way Romero does 
you know, these really beautiful poses of women. Okay, so let's keep turning the page. Uh, let's go back because um, I do want to share the other book with you guys. But I guess I have to stop this video and start another video. So let's um, let's do this quick. This is going to take some time. Okay, here we have, we did this already. <clears throat> uh, let me see. The Vigilante Justice. Uh, mugging and Mugger. This is sort of like the the gesture form of a, how a figure picks up another guy or something, blocking out the scenes. That's what this is. And when I say blocking out, and whenever you see something like blocking out, that means that you're putting the picture, you know, all together and stuff. Or you're drawing the picture. So that's just a shortcut for comics, blocking out. Let me see, we have this. This is the same pose. Let me see, we have... You can tell the gestures are formed in different parts. You know, the torso, the pelvic, and the shape of the legs. You can see some form of cylinders on the body. Let me see right here. This is the finished drawing. This is the process, and this is the finished drawing right here. Okay, let me see... Uh, This is this right here, and this is the finished drawing of this. So this is like a chick, actually, um, he has this guy captive, you know, all tied up. You know, there's a lot of bad chicks out there, so you can see it right here. All right, so this is something else. The professionals. is telling you all the highlights and cast shadows pretty much like the other pages so i'm going to go a little faster guys because i want to do the other video later on and plus i got to charge the phone um you can tell he used some type of um line gestures on this you know it's like um, a hint of a uh, line gesture and i think there's something else here that maybe you guys might like let me see if i find it um, this is a police guy holding a criminal. Uh, let me see what we have here. So it's, it has all kinds of uh, stories and sceneries. Let me see. Oh, this is really cool because I like the way he did this. Um, for example, there's a guy inside of an office. He's in a dark room, and then he's looking out. And there's a lot of cast shadow on the body, on the clothes, and on the desk. And look at the way he puts the cigarette on the ashtray. So there's a lot of drama here. It's really cool the way he did this awesome stuff. So let me see what else we have here. Arms and smugglers. Okay, so I'm going to give my rating for this book. So I actually give a rating to this book. I will give it a 15. Now, the reason why I give it a 15, because it's got a lot of details and it's got a lot of stuff that you can learn. So you should, you guys should uh, look out for this book. I'm pretty sure you can find it on eBay used. Um, so there's a lot of bookstores out there that close down and all these books are in the warehouses. So I'm pretty sure you'll find this book especially uh, from Barnes & Nobles. This is awesome right here, the girl playing pool. And it's great perspective right here. Fantastic. And this is something else right here. This is a little friendly persuasion weapons. Oh yeah, this is a, this will show you how to draw weapons by putting the pieces together right here. That's pretty cool, see? Putting the pieces step by step and then you put it all together and you make your gun. Awesome stuff here. And it gives you an idea how to draw guns, all type of guns. 
That would look more like the Punisher. If you look at the whole figure, it looks kind of like the Punisher. <clears throat> and that's one of my favorite characters, the Punisher, because he actually goes after, he's sort of like a vigilante, and that's what we need today, nowadays in society, is a vigilante that could clean up everything. So yeah, uh, that's like sort of like the Punisher. Really cool pose, I like this, it's really cool. You can tell this is like an evil guy, and he's got his guards behind him and shit. Pretty cool stuff. This is, uh, I like the way he did this. The blacks, you know, right here. The black cast shadow on the... You could tell this is, the way he did this is sort of like a, I would say like a, a trench coat or a leather jacket. So he really get, he actually gave a lot of details to this. Really cool stuff. Let's see what else we have here. Oh, okay. Here we have the, uh, the gesture form. And like I said, it's sort of like a... Uh, a dummy uh, mannequin figure, you see? You can see the the balance line. I'm going to use the ruler so I can show you. You see the balance line right here and a small oval and this part of the hip area a little bigger. And then what he does is he probably uses lines or he just does simply the outline of the legs, you know. And it could be also that he's, he does the joints first and then he connects the body all together and stuff. So I'm sort of like analyzing the way he did this. Awesome drawing. Then he does, this is some. This is somebody else. This is more like, I think this is by Kevin Sharp. Yeah, I wrote it right here. Kevin Sharp does this one. And Kevin Sharp works like with the core of the body and the underwear technique, the chest area. Then he builds the body little by little. This is an awesome scene that he did right here. Really cool stuff. Oh, okay, here we have more balance line. And I, here you see the balance line right here, then another balance right here. And, and if you look at this, this kind of kind of reminds you how Romero does his figure. So you can actually do stuff like this. So let me give you an idea how this artist did this. And I think this is by Koo. Koo did this one. So let's work with this one. So he starts off. Let's see, yeah, he starts off with the balance line here and this balance line. So yeah, let's start with this one. Start the center line for the center of the body, the balance line here. Uh, here's a circle, and I'm going to do pretty much like Romero does. Uh, that's the way Romero works. But this one is definitely going to be different, so we got to keep in mind that this one is going to be different. And then he does the sockets, you know, so like the cylinder shapes. And let's work with the joint on his arms, the, sh the shoulders. Right there, this arm goes this way, and if you want, you could do the lines coming out, because Romero does that sometimes, he'll do the lines coming out, like that, and then joint over here, and another joint here, and then if you want, just do the rest of the leg, you don't even have to do the lines, like that. Okay, so let me do this in black pencil so you can see the uh, the details more better. He'll start here first. He'll do the oval for the chest area. He'll do the balance line here. Then he'll do the oval for the hip area. Then he'll do the socket. And then I don't know why he, maybe he did. Maybe it's something like this, yeah. And then he did the line, I would guess. That's my greatest guess. That's one of because I'm sort of like guessing and analyzing how these these guys do their techniques. So right there's the shoulder. Right here's the other part of the arm. And then the head. I always leave the head for last. Most artists would like to draw, they actually like to draw the head first, but I actually leave the head for last better. 
and then we'll do the forearm because it's sort of foreshortening so he has a like sort of like a foreshortening pose so we have to keep that in mind i bought pizza if you want it's in the bottom there dude I, I tried to text you, but I don't know. Um, I couldn't text you. I don't know why. Yeah, yesterday. I bought it yesterday. Oh, no. I yeah. passed out. Oh. All right, guys. So uh, right here we have the rib cage. We got to make sure. And then right here he has a shoulder. And he's got like a big shoulder. So we got to you know make sure we make the outline here. Keep in mind that this is a big dude, so we got to make him big. And then we can work with the outline of his. And the hand. Okay, so you have an idea, and it, and if you look at it, <clears throat> it's kind of like uh, uh, Romero would actually do the body. So it's sort of like you know, the same uh, pose. You know. Okay, so now let's look at this. Right, let's keep looking at this because there's more stuff here that we got to check out, guys. And I think we're gonna end it with this book, and then the next video would be how to draw great looking comic book women and uh, there's a possible chance that i might show you two books by christopher hart on drawing women so this one is the same thing you can tell that this guy uses the balance line for the shoulder and a balance line for the bottom part of the you know the belly that he drew here and of course if you look at this it's sort of like cartoony like very very cartoony and this is the finished drawing. I love the way he did the inking on this. It's really cool the way he did the inking. I would guess that he probably started out doing the outline of the ink first, and then he worked with the center of the whole drawing, I guess. And you can see the, the zigzag lines for the crease of the clothes right here. And right here, you see more exaggerated on this one right here. Okay, let's see what else we have here. The traditional city street scene. All right, the loading docks right here. And this is sort of like a, a loading dock, but you can see the city in the background. So what's interesting about this, well, let's look at this picture first. And like always, everything has to do with composition, guys. You see the foreground over here, and you see the middle ground here, this middle ground here, and then you see the background, you see? And you see more background. So that's what makes the drawing interesting. You see stuff happening here, stuff happening here, and the background of the city over here, see? That's the same thing over here, but except that you see the foreground are the boxes, and the foreground is this pillar here, whatever that is. I think it's one of those where you tie the rope for the boats. And then you see the bridge right here, which is the middle ground with the guy standing on the bridge. So that's what they mean, you know, when... And David Finch actually teaches us um, on his videos that they show composition. That's very, very important. So let's see the next page here. I didn't like the way he drew this. I think, I don't know, the, the body looks kind of flat, kind of. Um, but it shows a sense of drama, you know, the perspective from the buildings. Um, but this I'm not too happy with. I think maybe what they should have done was something more like this. You see, that's more better. And it's more greater, it has more impact. So, yeah, I think they're comparing, they're, yeah, they're comparing this scene to this scene, which is more better, you see. This shows more action. It's got more, di you know, dynamic. And also foreshortening. The hand is coming at us. And the face is more front. And you can see half of the body is like all the way. So it's a lot of, um, there's a lot of dynamic shit going on here, you know.
adjustment and here we have a car plunging in a, I guess in a, in a lake or something yeah it's a lake And like I said, you know, you don't really have to draw the cars really perfect as long as you get the car a three-dimensional shape. I remember when I was in, in New York and I showed my portfolio to this editor. Well, the editor was reviewing my portfolio and he noticed that I drew the car flat. And he said that that's not a car. You need to draw the car um, three-dimensional and you got to give it form. You just can't draw the cars flat. And um, I did tell him that I got the idea from how to draw the Marvel way. But he said that that book wasn't very good, especially when it comes to drawing cars. Let me see if I have the book here. I think I have the book here. Let me see if I have it. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. It's like how to draw cars. I probably have it in the room, but no, yeah, I have it in the room. It's not here. I thought I had it here, but it's not here. But there's another book um, by Christopher Hart, How to Draw Cars, which is really cool. Uh, let me see. Let me see. No, it's not here. Shit. I thought I had it here. All right, so it's not here. Um... There's two books. There's one by Walter Foster, How to Draw Cars. And there's another one that's called How to Draw Monster Trucks and Cars. It's by Christopher Hart. So I might probably order that in the future because I need to learn how to draw cars way, way better and stuff. So here's another composition here. You can see the foreground, the guy, the bad guy here, the middle ground, the guy tied up in the car. And there's another bad guy over here. So that's definitely composition right there so here we have graphic design and layout <clears throat> that's the finished drawing you can see a lot of drama it's sort of like a black and white movie but very cartoony though very you can tell it's definitely cartoony a lot of black areas over here sort of like a black and white movie okay here we have more stuff right here There's uh, impact close-ups. That's pretty cool. Okay, guys, that's it. Let me see. Uh, these are other books, uh, which I need to get this one again because I lost this book, Drawing Cutting Edge Fusion. I got to definitely get that. I'm going to see if I can order that book. And um, this one I used to have, but I lost this one. This was a very good book, How to Draw Retro Cartoons by Christopher Hart. So Christopher Hart has got a lot of great books. Um, I really recommend you guys to get this one. Um, Drawing Cutting Edge Anatomy is really good. This one I have, but the only problem with this book is it doesn't, doesn't show you too much, you know, techniques and ideas and stuff. It does have something, but you just got to analyze it. All right. So um, good luck with, um, with your drawing, guys. And uh, what I'm going to do the next video, I'll probably do this book. So the thing is, I got to charge the phone and we'll start all over again. So thank you for watching and good luck.